Hey guys, in AWS news yesterday, what caught my eye is that they have a new version of their Amazon Linux. So that for the longest time I've been using Amazon Linux 2. Now they call it Amazon Linux 2023. And I was really confused about this. And I tweeted as much like, why do we have these sort of stage releases? And in, in, I, I mean, I'm an Arch Linux user. I'm, I'm very familiar with the, with the rolling release. And I always kind of assumed that Amazon Linux 2 was a rolling release because it updates the AMI and you just use the latest AMI. So now if I understand correctly, you're supposed to like, I don't know, every couple of years move between releases of Amazon Linux. And I've voiced my concern and uh, I think I, I'm an AWS guy, to its credit, answered me. So there's going to be released every couple of years, support for five giving a good balance for customers. You know, personally, I, I don't want to think about this. I really just want the OS to be as minimal as possible and for, for Amazon to just maintain it like they do with Lambda, really. I asked if, like, if, there, are, if there are any breaking changes and he, he answered that to maintain application compatibility. I, I don't quite understand if the, this whole thing that he, about um, libraries. So I think, I mean, I, this actually caught me by surprise. So I think Amazon Linux 2, people build using their libraries and dynamically link. Okay, I'm, I, I'm, I'm in the static building sort of mindset. So I wouldn't imagine, I, I think of Amazon Linux as, as a runtime. I don't use it, I don't think of it as a build type of tooling, right? But this is where I think my, my confusion services here because they're maintaining Amazon Linux as like a build system, which I really don't think of it as. So then we go into the normal thing about with static building, you have to rebuild everything, which is, which is especially true with the CV. I, I, and I have this argument a lot with people. There are lots of ca uh, counter arguments to, to dynamic linking. I probably made them in my video somewhere. Like, for example, I do believe static linking should have a smaller surface area because you're only like linking the stuff that you need from the from the your, the, the, your dependencies or shared libraries. And then another thing that came up was that, like, you know, like uh, Linux 5 and Linux 6, right? It's a bit confusing. It's a major release change under like Semba rules. Uh, you should there should be a breaking change between five Linux 5 and Linux 6, but there isn't. So that just just adds a little bit of confusion to the mix. As he says, even with a stable Linux ver uh, kernel ABI, a rolling release going from a major version isn't going to suit everyone. Even small changes might have an impact. So that got me thinking, if, it, if there's small changes in the Linux kernel that have an impact, like what are they? Cause, because as I comment here, like, like if, there, if there are like tiny small changes, like maybe like Amazon can canary the, the, the Amazon Linux uh, rollout, in the sense that, like, you know, Arch Linux users, not everyone uses, not everyone updates every day. So you, those people who do update every day or every second will kind of, like, be, be the astronauts, be the testers. But I can't help but think if, if you, like, do this, like, hardcore snapshot, you, you, it's going to be, you know, the, the step up is going to be more difficult to ascertain the changes. You know, the, the, the testing cycle becomes a lot more difficult when you have to do a major step. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm still don't think it's a great idea, um, for the stepped, uh, release. And then he goes on to say, Stuart goes on to say that, uh, something about C groups V1. I mean, only Docker or LXC uses the C groups. So I use the ECS version, which has Docker running and re ready installed, like, like who is using C groups if, if, if not just the Docker thing? So I'm a little, or maybe it somehow breaks Docker, who knows? There was another example. Oh my gosh, it's so difficult to follow a conversation here. The conversation went on some tangents here. I mean, he, he's saying that static limper takes up duplicate memory. I didn't really buy the argument. If there is a CVE, you have to rebuild. And I think to myself, well, if there is a security problem with the dependency, isn't it better that you rebuild? You know, at least you, you have a full end-to-end -end pipeline where you know you fixed the issue. I think I think this this school of thought where, you, where dynamic library updates and that somehow 
fixes your security issue in your in your app. I think that's just the weirdest logic. So he he said that basically this CVE, if more people are using Go, then it would be more problematic or something. Uh, okay, so it's it's just it's a CVE in Go, and yeah, if there's a CVE in Go. Um, People should just rebuild and and do an update. I'm not 100% sure. I guess he's making an argument that if, if it was like Python, they could just up, update the, um, the Python runtime and this problem would have gone away. No, I... I don't buy it. You, you, you need to have a pipeline. You need to be in control of your whole code, code pipeline and you need to do the testing yourself. I, I really don't like this, this updating a dynamic library or binary by vendor strategy. I just think it's absolutely bizarre. I, I, do you feel the same way? Well, anyway, interesting thread. Hey, thanks, Stuart, for contributing. And, and I'm just making this video just to just engage other my followers who, who, who I think are, um, are into Archinex and who, who might use AWS too, as to what their opinions are too. Um, thanks for watching. Please comment below. Keep, and um, let's have a, let's learn from this, um, please. Um, I, I'm learning here. I mean, I'm, I, I want to have a debate. <laughs> I, I, maybe dynamic li uh, linking is all the way that uh, this release cadence does make sense for, for AWS's customers. Okay, bye guys.